Yeah, she's turning, and that is definitely not a lion. That is a very cute, fluffy baby waterbuck. Now, where's your mum? Now, it is not uncommon for adults to leave these guys by themselves, but normally they're lying down in a bit of a thicket. Now, is this the result of lion pandemonium overnight? That waterbuck have been split and chased about. I'm searching for an adult. I haven't seen one yet. But that little baby does look quite relaxed. are hoping for wild dogs this morning. Cheryl and Lucy, I hope for wild dogs every morning, every evening, middle of the day, middle of the night. They are by far my most favorite of creatures. Now, looking at this behavior, it is quite jumpy. So it could possibly be the result of the lions chasing things around Sydney's waterhole last night uh, and splitting up the different individuals. and early this morning. So what we're hoping, if they have snuck across our northern boundary here, is that they've gone and looped back somewhere further down, which is what they do. They do do that quite often. This section to the north now seems to be uh, taken over by the Talamati Pride. I mean, quite a few elephants through here as well, which always makes the tracking slightly more difficult. Good, good news. No tracks heading due north just yet. Maybe they did a, a sneaky puff at a maneuver. You've got them heading east. That's very good news. Now they just must continue east and maybe cut south. So we're going to keep with them. As I said, the Ellies have come through here quite a bit during the night. Let's just go stay with us for a little bit longer. We're going to try to see if we can see anything in that open area towards Sydney's waterhole. Anything going that side, Vim? Okay. Let's just go up ahead and have a quick look. That's I'm going to come back. I'm going to come over back and have a check. Let's just quickly peruse the large open plain that is next to. Apologize for the little bit of jumpy signal we experienced there, but we are live in the African bush. So all that can be seen is that lone. There's a lion stalking the waterbuck. There's a lion stalking that baby waterbuck by the looks of things. I can't see it's a bit far. There we go. I think James Richard was requesting a lion hunt on this exact place. So James, this is for you. No, I can't really see. That lion's dipped into that little, little hollow. And as I said, that baby waterbuck being by itself and wandering around is almost certainly from the lion activity in this area last night. Now, Vim, and that brief view we had of that lion, did it look like a male to you? Yes, it, did. it did look like a male to me as well. So, guys, this is really exciting. I know this could be quite difficult. If you are a little bit squeamish, especially when it comes to babies, you might want to take a little break from 
the drive, and I think there's a very strong chance of success. Uh, a single baby water buck alone. Oh, you can check that line moving. It looks like a young male. Looks like a young male. I wonder which male line this could be. I'm just getting my camera settings correct. Oh, baby water buck. That was not a good decision. Now, that water buck might look for safety in the water. Uh, when there are adults and being chased by predators, they often do do that. Monkeys have spotted the lion. Look, look, there it goes. Maybe that baby's gonna get away. Don't go over the damn wall. No, come back. We're not gonna be able to see what goes on. No! Oh, we can just sit and listen now. What's going on? There's one place we might get a view, and I do apologize. We're going to have to go to not the prettiest area, but um, around the gate. Um, we might be able to see down the boundary towards the Manuleti. He's going crazy. Um, it could be one of the Birminghams, they do. Um, some of them don't have the biggest mate. But from this, uh, it's very, very difficult uh, for us. Hopefully, we might get another chance at a visual. Oh, he's back. And good for you, little water bug. You escaped, so that looks a bit bigger than he did when he was stalking. It does look like possibly one of the Birmingham boys to me. Guess what? Cat's on. The cat streak's back on. Well done, Birmingham. We're just a day's break, so off we go to try and set the, another record. Oh, look at that beautiful morning light on that big male lion who got outsmarted by a baby water buck. Now, in certain cases, I've actually seen babies that have been disturbed during the night, whatnot, walk up to an animal like a lion, thinking it could be a little bit of safety. Unfortunately, it looks like he's heading back towards us. Yeah, the monkey's alarm calling. So they are what first notified that little baby that there was a predator in its midst. There he pops out now. Now, he could be tracking the Inkahuma pride. Oh, have a little drink. Yeah, the monkeys. Lion! 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 Hopefully he does keep walking towards us.
Now, the reason he could be tracking the Ingahumas is he might have smelt a female that smells like she's an estrus. Looks like that. Something gave him a little fright there. He turned back to have a look. Well, at least we know the outcome of the chase. Now, lions only have about a 12% success rate. So only 1.2 times out of 10 that they chase something, they actually catch it. I thought he had a better, better than average chance with a young waterbuck like that. And he probably needed to catch it before it got right out into the open there. When it was on the edge of the thickets, he had a little bit more cover. I did mention a little bit earlier that James and Richard requested just yesterday for a lion hunt at Sydney's uh, dam, and he just says he can't believe he got his lion hunt wish. Well, there we go. Ask and you shall receive. Not always, of course. I ask for wild dogs every morning, but I don't always receive. And, and oh, VM asked for lions, so he's very happy. So we're just going to go pop ourselves over on the other side where we might get a bit of visual as he walks, hopefully, to the south and towards us. So we've just seen that baby waterbuck all alone out in the wild, and Paul Rizzo is wondering, Lady Luck is on our side this morning. He seems to be coming the right way. There you go. I'm pretty confident it's one of the Birminghams now, as we can see him a bit closer, and also just from his behavior, the fact that he is scent marking. It does look like he's tracking the Inkahuma girls by scent. So maybe he'll take the tracking duties off my shoulders today. No, no, you're going the wrong way. Turn around. And he's just giving that good, that quarry bush a good sniff and scent mark. Now, the Birminghams haven't been up here too often in the last couple of months. Now, they've been spending quite a lot of time in the south. And, oh, he's going to roar. little contact rule he did there. Mm. Are the ladies going to respond to him? That's the question. There it is again. Those little contact rolls as he walks directly towards us. I was hope there we go. I'm hoping he decides to take these contact rolls 
into a full roar shortly. Oh, magnificent beastie. Oh, look at that light coming onto his face. spotted him. So I was just going to be on the game live channel for a second. Mark, Mark. Mark, he has crossed into Vuitella, um and he is heading straight sort of southwest, so uh, he might cross into the, the western sectors. contact calls. I wonder if he's not looking at those male lion tracks we were following. I think he's going to have to call a little bit louder than that to reach those other males. But who knows, maybe the Nkuhuma ladies are close by somewhere. beauty to I think it could be Blondie. I'm not 100% sure and maybe one of you guys can tell me which Birmingham boy this is. I'm quite sure it is a Birmingham boy just from his behavior and his his size and rough age. So he's probably about five and a half, six years old coming into his prime and has massive four paws. different scars and scratches and nicks that they carry. And it is tough at the top as a male lion. Lots of, lots of battles to be fought, not only with interlopers, but with their own members of your coalition. Now remember guys, that clickety click is my camera. So you do encourage screenshots and share them everywhere with the hashtag Safari Live. Morning, Goodwell. There's one Wanuna Ngala um, just off Sandy Patch near the junction with Bovosok Gari Katlan at Sydney's.
So he's probably been moving quite a lot overnight. Okay. Oh, look at that light in his eyes. So his ears are still just rotating around listening. Canada Keith says, what an awesome start to the drive. Well, I couldn't concur more. Now, hopefully it can just become more awesome from here. Swanson's spur file calling. <laughs> Definitely not the most beautiful bird call in the bush. And then you might also be able to hear a very high pitched doo -doo -doo, little blue wax bills. Still got a little bit of filling out to do in the mane, uh, but not all male lions develop that full massive mane. And you do have different coloration. You see, it's starting to get a bit darker. Such an important part of a male lion offers huge protection when they are fighting. He's just moving his head from side to side, listening. hoping to hear either contact calls or alarm calls. And you can see the flies already descending. <laughs> it looks like he's almost closing his eyes to try to keep the flies away. of the bush waking up, crested franklins, cape turtle doves. Oh, another little contact roar. Oh, there's a short break. And isn't this absolutely spectacular being able to follow? male line in this absolutely gorgeous morning light. So, the lions have obviously a far more developed sense of scent than we do. JB in Michigan is wondering, can he tell which way to go by scent? Most definitely, if the scent's fresh enough, he'll, he'll definitely be able to tell. I'm just going to zoot on ahead, try and get up ahead of him. Zigzag our way through all these that have seen the attentions of the elephants. Oh, he's stopping for another break. Let's try getting this. Slightly more pleasant spot for us. He's right out in the open. Hey, 
nuestra. Is starting to look for his breakfast. He's listening intently. Well, thanks to Angie in Ohio, who says this is Birmingham boy number four. I got a report from the guys up in the Manuleti that one of those Salati males looked like he took quite a beating from the B-boys, or the Brummies, as they are known to most of the guides in this part of the world. Quite a scorcher today, I think, with the mercury heading well into the 90s Fahrenheit, 30s Celsius. So there's a strong possibility he's not going to move too much more. I think it's probably already mid 70s in Fahrenheit, and we're not even at 7 a.m. yet. James, quickly. James, James. James, James Henry, do you copy? James might be off the vehicle at the moment. Stations of Swanunangala is now lying up just to the west of uh, Sandy Patch Road and just to the south of Buffalo Gari cut line. One station here, two making their way. Of course. Oh, there we go. A little contact call again. Michigan's wondering, could this be the lion that I heard roaring on the Juma cam this morning? Uh, it is possible, but there was another male that walked straight across quarantine uh, during the night, so that could have been him as well. Standing by, Mark. Negative, uh, near Sydney's dam, but now moving southwest uh, towards Virtual Access.
see he's going to this area where the elephants have pushed over every tree. So we're just going to have to try to stay a little bit wider of him. We'll try to stick with him. A lookout. I thought maybe he might be on the trail of the Nkumas. Maybe not. He might have decided that they've gone too far and he's going to go look for the rest of his coalition. position. Copy. My recommendation is take Sandy Patch and come around to Vertel Access. I'm in the middle of the block uh, between Sydney's and Vertel Access, probably 100 meters from Access, uh, where there's a large scotia just to the south of the road and some mud wallows. He's going to pop up around there. Sandy Patch. Hold on, we're going to do some log hopping. There we go. Oh, we're going to have to do a bit, a little bit more speed. VM, you ready? So a big Safari Live welcome back to Getherson, who's a brand spanking new viewer and wondering, why does this lion let me drive so close to it? Why does it let me follow it? Well, there's a couple of reasons. These lions have grown up with safari vehicles around them, and they do not have an instinctive response to safari vehicles. So if I had to walk up to him, he would probably run away during the day, and at night he would try to eat me. But a car smells like, our car smells like petrol and oil. Oh, there he is in the scent mark. And... As long as you drive respectfully and you don't cross that personal space boundary with them, they pretty much ignore the vehicles, which enables us to take you on these incredible safaris following some of Africa's most large and wonderful animals. Looks like he's gonna pop out almost exactly where Mr. Tingana had that warthog kill a couple of days ago. You okay, Vim? No. Okay. Uh, he's taking us through a bit of a bad spot. We have to do some quick maneuvering so we don't lose him. through to the road. Oh, that would have been very close.
Is he running? No, he's just running. marking, but he's been spotted by Impala. Listen to this. Listen to all these alarm calls. Now, we heard monkeys saying, lion, 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 earlier. Now we've got a pilot doing the same thing. I think he smelt the remnants of that carcass Tingana was feeding on. This is exactly where he had that water kill. Rotten smell. So once an animal has been spotted in an alarm calls like this, the hunt's sort of over. Oh. That was so funny. There was, an impala, there was an impala right around that bush. And as the lion walked around it, he got a bit of fright. Mike coming. Mike, I would come a bit faster. Um, he's now in the block, uh, heading sort of straight south um, along those mud wallows from that big scotia. So Sheila says, cat a day. Today, yes, so far it is. What a fantastic start to the sunrise safari, Sheila. I think he might be heading towards where we had the tracks of that other male this morning. Listen to those impalas, they're going bananas. Now, two males have got confused and are actually chasing each other, and that's impala rutting. So when this happens, sometimes they get very silly and might run straight into a lion. They almost seem to forget. Mike, we're now getting close to Triple M. Just a quick update on Commander Bond. Uh, unfortunately, it seems like the gremlins have invaded him so far this morning, so he has headed back for the tech team to try a few tricks. Uh, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, he'll be back with us shortly. said those impalas were shouting lion, lion, just slightly different to the wildebeest and Billy Connolly. Oh, he's crossing.
passing out of our Travis area, I'm afraid. I'm afraid we're going to see his bottom disappear. Stations as Wanunangala has crossed Triple M into Simbambili, just to the west of Wanapan. We're just going to stay here in case he decides to come back.